Well, we're standing with a gentleman called Matthew Quitter in front of a Morris Thousand. Quite an early one because it's a split screen. Now, I've owned several Moggies over the years, uh, including the uh, Traveller. Uh, and during my drag racing years, I've seen all kinds of engines stuffed into that engine bay. But Matthew, this is a somewhat different power plant. Yeah. Very, very current. Thank you. So, so we've converted it to electric. Um, it's got a 13 kilowatt hour uh, battery in it. Uh, this is our city conversion. So it does 40 miles range, about 55 miles an hour. Um, we can do faster and longer range cars if customers require. Um, but the idea of this was to develop a car that was good for cities. So the average journey in a city is around six miles. And it takes about an hour to do that journey. Um, so this is my daily driver. Um, I tend to charge it once a week and I drive around London all um, all day long um, and uh, you don't pay congestion charge, you don't pay residence parking, you don't pay uh, T charge, um, it's still classic car insurance um, and the fuel costs, it costs about a pound to charge, uh, so it's about 10 kilowatt hours to charge, um, so it, it costs me about 200 pounds a year to run the car in total. And this won't require, I think, an MOT. This must be no, 40 no. years old. No, this, well, this, is, well, this is a 1953, actually. So this is uh, 65 years old now. Um, it doesn't require an MOT um, because it's MOT exempt from age. Um, and then the modifications that we've done, uh, we, we haven't actually affected the chassis. We haven't affected the steering, suspension. So under the new eight-point rule uh, system, uh, we actually fly through that with a good 10 points. Um, so everything that we do um, for these conversions is fully re reversible. Um, so we could potentially have this back to a petrol car in, in a couple of days if there was a historical imperative to keep the car original. But in reality, everyone I've ever spoken to, everyone I've ever taken for a drive, myself included, wouldn't dream of turning it back to petrol. Once you've driven an electric car, um, it's, it's revelatory and you suddenly realize that petrol is unfortunately um, an old technology now. Uh, I, I consider it equivalent to the first time you picked up your, your a smartphone and you're used to using Nokia 2210s and suddenly you realize that there's been a seismic change in technology and suddenly your, your old uh, feature phone just doesn't cut it anymore and you want your friend's smartphone. Um, and I'd say the same is true of this. It's sort of, uh, it's, it's just a, a, a new way of traveling. I'm quite intrigued by the fact that you were saying you, you use it for city on a daily yes, basis, yes. but you only charge it once a week. Yes, yes. Driving on average six, seven miles a day. Um, it does 40 miles range. So I charge, yeah, I charge it, you know, every sort of five, six days. Um, in reality, it takes about five hours to charge. So I'll either leave it overnight or while I'm working or, or if I'm particularly busy, I'll charge it a few, you know, every, every few days or I'll charge it for a couple of hours. It's, it's very flexible. Um, it's not this sort of, it's like, I mean, there's still a fuel gauge. So it says full or empty. And as you get down to quarter of a tank, you start to think, oh, I should probably look to charge this now. It charges off a 13 amp socket. So where you can charge your phone, you can charge this car, uh, which means there's tons and tons of places where you can plug in. Um, quite often, the front, you know, near the front door of your flats or um, outside, you know, anywhere around here, there's a 13 amp socket. We can get a charge. Um, so I've had no problems. Part of using this on a daily basis is to, to live with an electric car in London and explore some of the, the potential problems that people have raised. One of which is, does living in a flat in central London mean that you can't own an electric car? The answer is, no, it doesn't. But if somebody is, is wanting it for a longer range. You said that um, right. you can make those changes fairly easy. Yes. Is that, is that just a, a larger battery? It's or? a large battery. So it effectively comes down to cost. Um, so the most significant cost on an electric car are the batteries. Um, so we're currently converting a VW camper van, um, a Type 2, that's getting 54 kilowatt hours of Tesla batteries in it. Um, and that'll be able to do about 180 miles of range. Um, but accordingly, it's about twice the price to convert that than it is to convert this. So this is a 13 kilowatt car, 13 kilowatt hour car. Um, that, that VW camp is going to be 54. Um, so you're paying for that many more batteries. So interest so far, sold many, uh, yeah, lots of inquiries? No, absolutely overwhelmed. So this is, so we've been in business for a year. Um, we, we started showing the car um, about six months ago. Um, and yeah, we're absolutely, we're full now. Um, we're actually looking to move into larger premises. Uh, we're currently working on about five cars, uh, a Morris Traveller as well. Um, uh, we've got a Land Rover. And the next one out will probably be a Land Rover Series 2. Uh, then we were doing a Mini, um, the camper van I mentioned. Then we've got a very rare Pontiac coming down to the garage in the next few days, um, which will be fun to do. But we also, um, we're not just a car conversion company, we also develop the kits. Because, so for example, with the Morris Minor, um, over the, the 
60 years that it was well, from the 50s through to the late 70s when it was made um, they sold them all over the world so there are Morris Minor owners in Australia South Africa America um, and it isn't economically or environmentally sensible to be sending large batteries and motors around the world but we can send them the kits that enable them to do the conversion themselves is that a, a DIY conversion or is absolutely. that it absolutely. is yeah we believe so so the kits are specifically built that if you're comfortable taking out the motor in, the, in a Morris Minor which a lot of Morris Minor owners are you know it's, it's a fairly simple job to do with the Morris Minor then we believe that you'd be comfortable putting it in. Um, it's technically not that difficult. There are so many more parts to it. For example, if you've rebuilt a Morris Minor A-Series engine, you, you've dealt with nearly a thousand potential parts. There's just not that many parts to an electric car. They just, one of the reasons they're far more reliable and they last much longer um, is there's so less moving parts. There's literally two bearings in this that carry the rotor and that's it. That's the only parts that move. Um, so they don't really wear out. Well, I'm very impressed with that. It, it looks wonderful. It looks Thank like you. you put a lot of effort into it. Yeah. Uh, well, I wish you well for the future. That's very kind of you. Thank you. I hope to see you driving an electric car as well one day. <laughs> Maybe. If anyone wants a test drive, we're London Electric Cars. Uh, we can be found online at londonelectriccars.com. But equally, we're on Facebook and Instagram, also London Electric Cars.